Hi all, I'm Jeff Hewlett. I'm a decision confidence builder. I'm the author of the book, Making Choices, Making Money. Last week, we kicked off Budgeting and Financial Planning Month. As a reminder, we grounded the budgeting and financial planning journey in attitudes and behaviors. This is the short version of my approach to wealth building. If you can implement these, you will build wealth. This is called the MTP. The M is motivation grounding. Be content with yourself. Don't spend money you don't have. Don't buy things you don't need. And don't focus on impressing people. Then the T is time frame setting. Have a long-term focus. And long-term is not just a year or two. Wealth and security are built over decades, not months. And then the P, finally, is process implementing. Save, invest, evaluate, rebalance, and repeat. Allow me to illustrate the idea of making confident financial decisions with a simple example, buying a daily cup of coffee. If you're not a coffee drinker, that's okay. You can substitute any want or non-need product you regularly purchase. My intention here is to help you understand and manage the impact of fixed purchases over a long period of time. Let's say you have a habit of buying a Starbucks Vente Cafe Latte for about $4 every day. The habit costs you $20 per week. You think to yourself, I can't afford this. I'm worth it. All decisions you make have an emotional element to them. You feel them in your gut and you use this gut feeling to gauge any actions you may take. But when you think practically, not emotionally, like action-oriented, knowledge-seeking, confident, calm, and collected, your new thinking approach sends up a red flag. Why am I deriving my self-worth worth from a cup of coffee? Herein lies the basics of my approach to wealth building. Pragmatic thinking fuels personal power, and emotional intelligence and education are the greatest sources of that power. Pragmatics provide kindness to others and consider kindness a source of strength. Applying this mindset provides you with focus and tools to successfully navigate the complex consumer finance landscape. This is because you are not allowing your emotions to bias your decision making. Sometimes, emotion-based judgment has its place, but only in the context of good decision making process. For example, instincts come from an unspoken emotion you just feel a certain way. A good decision process teases out the helpful emotion and leaves behind any appropriate emotional bias. Although thinking pragmatically is not always intuitive, with practice it's very achievable. Compare your coffee co cup of coffee buying habit and the first two points of the wealth building approach, the M and the T, and ask yourself these questions. Do I need a Starbucks coffee drink? Or perhaps I'm trying to impress someone, including me. Is this action consistent with my long-term focus? Can I achieve the same value, but without spending $4 a day? Now let's take a closer look at the long-term impact. It's an arbitrage, a fancy term we economists use to describe buying or selling assets in different markets to take advantage of price differences, leveraging risks for financial growth. A good arbitrage trade leads to higher value choices, a confident decision, or growth. My approach is to compare your financial decisions to your retirement aspirations, usually considered the longest term focus of your life. So, how bad could $4 a day, a $4 a day coffee habit be? A 22 year old spending $4 a day, five times a week, would forego almost 400,000 at retirement throughout their working life. A pragmatist would, br would bring a reusable cup of coffee from home or get the free coffee at the office instead. This graph shows the mathematical intuition of nonlinear growth. We would rather nonlinear growth work for us. This graph shows how habits may lead to nonlinear growth working against us. Also, remember it's never too late to start. Even if you're not in your 20s, good financial habits will accrue to your long-term wealth. You may still believe purchasing a coffee drink is worth it. People buy non-needs all the time. I'm not suggesting you never make a non-need purchase. Of course you will. This example illustrates how the sum of your small decision adds up over the long term and how your feelings may build habits affecting the decisions you make. So next week, we'll discuss how to make non-need purchases by implementing the appropriate payment hierarchy. We call this approach, pay yourself first. But until then, you've got this.